Hey guys, me Saran, back with another car video, car video, car video, car video. This is going to be a really super quick car video, I promise, promise, promise. Um, a lot of you guys have wanted me to do a follow-up video to my other um, Katy Perry video, which you guys also highly requested, because Katy Perry recently did an interview with D-Ray, um, like a couple days ago or something like that. And I swear, like, like five or six of y'all, like, put the video in my mentions, like, oh my god, Saran, like, what do you think about this? Do a video about this, do a video about this, do a video about this. That shit's mad funny. I be feeling like, y'all keep me, like, y'all keep me, like, up to date. Y'all keep me, like, up to date on everything that's happening. Because if you guys hadn't put that in my mentions, I probably wouldn't even have heard about it. Because, like, I don't follow her and I don't really, like, follow, like, white media like that. So Katy Perry did this like crying ass interview with DeRay and like cultural appropriation got brought up and like racism got brought up. And she also was a part of this like round table conversation that Caitlyn Jenner was a part of and Caitlyn Jenner got fucking schooled by Amanda Seals, who's awesome. She's an actress. She's a stand up comedian. Um, she's a DJ. She does like all types of amazing things. I follow her on Instagram and her Instagram stories be fucking popping. So shout out to Amanda Seals. Um... But yeah, so Katy Perry did this interview with D-Ray where she like started crying, she like broke down crying, and she's basically talking about cultural appropriation, and how cultural appropriation is a real thing, and how it is, you know, a tenant of the system of race. She doesn't say this, these are, these, she doesn't say this, these are my words. And how, you know, cultural appropriation is, you know, still a tenant of, you know, racism, white supremacy, and flex and white privilege, and all things that I've talked about, I talked about in my video about her, and a lot of people wanted to know, like, what did I, what did I think about it? And basically, kind of like, do I accept her apology, even though she wasn't like apologizing to me personally, but, you know, just like, oh, apologizing for cultural appropriation and things like that, because I did mention in my video, like, that she had yet to apologize. So what I want to say is a couple of things. Number one, I do think that people can grow. I do think that people can change. I think that nobody is born woke. Nobody is born awake. Nobody is born aware. You have your fucking wake-up call. You have your Negro wake-up call. You have, you know, you have, you do have some white people that wake up to the fact that they are racist. Yes, all white people. They have been conditioned and socialized to be racist by growing up in a racist white supremacist society that sends them, you know, beliefs about, you know, how they're the shit just because they're white. I believe all that. However, with that being said... I don't think that Katy Perry is one of those people. I don't believe her apology. I thought that the whole interview felt really disingenuous. And I think that it is another part of whatever this, you know, this rebranding it is. Um, how she's trying to rebrand herself as an activist, as conscious, as woke. Um, and like that SNL performance was just like a few weeks ago. Like, I know that, like, in our digital era, you know, everything feels like it moves very fast. So a week to two weeks to three weeks ago can feel like years, you know, months and years ago. But, like, that SNL performance that she did with um, fucking Migos or whatever, that's for that song, Bon Appetit, that was just, like, a few weeks ago. You know, like, that was just a few weeks ago. Um, that video was, like, fairly recent. Like, I just don't believe... I don't believe her <laughs> and I don't believe that she's like come to all these like amazing wonderful masterful conclusions in the last week two weeks if she has okay I guess kudos to her but I personally don't believe it again I think this is a very calculated maneuver as a part of this you know image rebranding that she's trying to go with to rebrand herself as some type of um, activist or you know that she has some, some type of you know political awareness or something like that nothing she said really in that interview convinced me that she's taking any of this seriously because this bitch is a, a fucking clown like Katy Perry's a clown so nothing that she said in that interview has convinced me that she's taking any of this seriously that she's even taking her own words seriously like again I think it's just like a very calculated you know maneuver a PR maneuver and also, I want to address the fact that she, like, part partway through this interview, she, like, breaks down in tears. She, like, breaks down crying. And it's very much like, you know, 
I am a poor, and this is also really why I feel like it's disingenuous, because it's like, you know, I'm a poor, fragile white girl, poor me. Katy Perry's like 32 or 33 years old. Katy Perry's not a child. She's not a child. She's not a little girl. Contrary to what she wants you to believe, walking around with fucking sharks on her head and cheese hats and shit, like she's 13 years old. Like, Katy Perry is not a child. She's not a little girl. She's not even in her 20s anymore. And, um, you know, I just don't believe, you know, she breaks down crying and it's very much this, this Taylor Swift-esque routine, which again, these two are the same fucking bitch, Taylor Swift and Katy Perry, which is why they hate each other. This very Taylor Swift routine of this just wide-eyed innocence of, and I had no idea, I had no idea of what I was doing was wrong, you know, even though for the first seven years of my career people repeatedly told me over and over again this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong they spelled out you know in 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 clear concise terms why this is wrong why you don't do this why you don't say this type of thing why it's inappropriate you know and but she's putting on this again this wide-eyed teary-eyed fucking routine of I didn't know and I had no idea and I'm learning and everyone please be gentle with me and don't be harsh with me and don't yell at me because it's just really not my fault and just none of this is my fault and I'm just really trying to learn can you just all stop yelling at me it was like very like like that like that was like the tone of the whole interview and then again like and she starts with these fucking these crocodile tears and it's just like listen you're not a child you're not a little girl you're not this fragile innocent white woman which I've done videos on before on how white women they do they do they do this fucking thing they play this fragile flower this game like of you know I'm this fragile innocent child and I need to be protected and protect me and shield me and you know and it's white fragility it's white fragility men white men also suffer from white fragility because they're just so ignorant like white people in general are fucking just ignorant as fuck like they're ignorant to the ways of the world they don't understand the world they don't understand race they don't understand the way that anything fucking works like they're fucking just like they're dumb they're ignorant as shit and that causes them to develop this fragility where they can't even like talk talk about race talk about racism talk about all these isms talk about the way that these things intersect without crying or getting upset or getting angry and like white men are also guilty of this as well but and I've talked about white fragility and other videos uh Robin D'Angelo who is a white writer wrote a really excellent paper on it that uh, I reference a lot that um everyone should should read because it's quite good but it's just like white men do it as well but white women really 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 do it like they really have this shit down to a science of just like I am this fragile flower, you know, I am this innocent, pure being, I am the pinnacle of femininity, and I need to be protected at all costs, and, you know, and this has really been this idea of, like, the fragile white woman that, you know, needs to be protected, and her innocence, and her purity, and her femininity, and all these things need to be protected, has been one of the foundations, one of the tenets of white supremacy since day one. One, right Dylan Roof when he went and he massacred those people in Charleston he had a whole manifesto part of which was you know they're raping our women and they they're taking over and they've got to go you know Emmett Till oh you know you you whistled at a white woman you were improper towards a white woman because again white women have historically even while claiming to fight against the patriarchy and claiming to be for feminism so often you have white women like Katy Perry in this video that even ones that claim to be feminist and empowered and all this shit the first thing they do is they backslide into this i'm a fragile feminine you know innocent little flower i'm this pure innocent you know being of white light as this white woman and i need to be protected and i need to be shielded and don't yell at me and don't get harsh with me and why is everyone so mad at me and you know and i had people that sat me down and they gave me this com- you know this nice conversation about why what i was doing was wrong and it's like but nobody has to hold your hand nobody has to hold anybody's hand and walk them through 
you're a fucking racist and here's why nobody nobody has to use nice words with you nobody has to not yell at you not curse at you not lose it on you nobody has to nobody's required and again even expect and nobody does that for us nobody does that for black people no you know we have to pick up we have to pick up on this shit because the world that we live in the version of America that we live in, the version of the whole world that we live in, if we don't pick up on this shit quick, we are dead. We are dead, literally, that's not an exaggeration. We do not have the luxury, we do not have the privilege. Again, we're talking about the flexing of privilege, the flexing of white privilege. Asking for somebody to hold your hand and walk you through why you're a racist? You want somebody to, you want a black person especially to hold your hand and walk you through why you are a racist? It's absurd. It's ridiculous. And it's privilege. It's privilege. It's just another way that privilege works. The way that white privilege works. The way that she's flexing her white privilege. Please hold my hand and walk me through this and be nice to me and don't yell at me. And if you do yell at me, I'm going to start crying with these crocodile tears because a white woman knows her fucking best asset that she has are those white girl tears that everybody is supposed to just drop everything because a white girl is crying you know and again that even goes back to this idea of like that white people white people feel like white lives matter more white lives white people white they do feel like white lives matter more than everybody else but white people feel like white feelings matter more than black lives right it's like black people are literally dying in like dying dying in the streets dying in the prison systems dying in the schools like white like and white people feel like you're dying but you don't don't be angry with me you're dying but don't yell at me you're dying but hold my hand and walk me through it and think of my feelings and who's gonna think of my feelings right i I'm white so I gotta be right like I always say and who is gonna think of my feelings I really don't care that your people are dying in the streets you know in part because of racist stereotypes like the ones that I Katy Perry perpetuated in my this is how we do when I sat there with cornrows and grills in my mouth eating watermelon I really don't care but I need you black person as your people fucking die in the street and as they suffer from health and wealth disparities I need you to think of me and my feelings and hold my hand and walk me through this and that is just still more white privilege and your Google ain't broke like I always say your Google ain't broke Google is free and available for everybody your friend shouldn't even have to sit you down and fucking hold your hand and walk you through why you what you did was racist and I also think there's an element because someone was also saying like I don't understand what the big deal is because how do people learn if if they don't ask why or something like that? And I'm a strong advocate, like I'm a strong proponent of asking questions, ask why, ask why for everything. However, don't expect anybody to not take a certain tone. You can ask why all day, but don't expect anybody to answer you. Don't expect anybody to give you an answer. Don't expect anybody to take time out of their day to fucking walk you through it. If somebody does take time out of their day to walk you through it, don't get mad about the tone that they're using with, with you. If they're angry at you, if they're cursing at you, because you are not entitled you're, no one is entitled and there's so much free knowledge out there that if you really cared you could look it up yourself you could read about it yourself you could google it yourself just just people have so many and white people white people have so many expectations and 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 this again this entitlement and especially and it's all white people but especially white women of just this you know and and hold my hand and walk me through it and people are so mean and now I'm gonna cry right and now I'm gonna cry about it so I really wasn't feeling her interview at all I wasn't feeling the shit that she was saying at all I didn't think it was legit I didn't think it was genuine genuine I thought again that it was part of this whole you know very concerted effort to rebrand her and to rebrand her image and as soon as she started crying it was just like why the fuck are you crying what are you crying about White people get so upset about being called racist and all this shit. Like, why are you crying? You're white. You're not in any type of danger. People calling you racist is not physically harming you or endangering you in any way. No one is enacting any type of violence against you. So why are you crying? You're sitting here talking to D-Ray about racism against black people you know about systemic racism about oppression of which you have been an active participant in for the entirety of your career 
and you're crying? Why are we making this about you and your feelings? Again, white people really feel like white feelings matter more than black lives. Like, your black life doesn't matter. You are supposed to cater to me and my feelings first because I'm white. And that's just the vibe that I got from that interview. That's the vibe that I get from many white people, especially white women. Um, And just like I already said, how to be a white ally, motherfucking don't. Like, you either got to get with it or get ran over and nobody has to walk you through shit or care about your fucking white feelings. Like, none of us have to care. So that's how I feel about that. For anybody that wanted to follow up to my Katy Perry video. um, So, yeah. Of course, uh, there will be some links in the description box. I'm really not going to link to her stupid-ass interview, but I am going to put a link to White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo in the description box if you haven't seen it, along with uh, some other really good links. Um, So check those out. Of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.